Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our talk about JSR 354, the Money and Currency API. My name is Wim van Haren. And my name is Jeroen Burgraaf. Uh, we are the founders of a company called Tritales. It's a company in the Netherlands. So uh, let's start with our talk about the Money and Currency API. Okay. Why uh, uh, talk about money? Um, well, before the JSR, um, we didn't really have uh, a way to deal with money in Java. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, most applications have to deal with money, but the main uh, programming languages uh, don't support first class, class data type for it. And because there's no standard, we as the developers keep on reinventing the wheel over and over again. So let's have a look at how we would typically go about dealing with money before the JSR came along. As you all know, money is made up of two parts. It has a numerical value and it has a currency. So as a beginning developer, you probably uh, would try to start with the double. As we've seen in the previous talk, not a good idea. And it's not because floating t uh, types are broken in Java. It's how the IEEE spec is defined. So the next uh, attempt will probably to use integer types. But then you have to remind yourself constantly to convert to sense first. Uh, for example, let's take a class called product. It has an attribute name and it has an attribute money of type long. Now suppose in our system we have two products defined and somewhere else our colleague is going to sum up the values. Now, the, yeah, he could be a bit confused about what 900 means. Is it 900 euros or 900 cents? So a better way would probably be to use big decimals. So let's rewrite the example. And now when our coworker adds up the values, he gets a value that's really uh, easy to interpret. However, there's still one thing missing. Are we talking about 9 euros or 9 dollars? So what's missing is currency. OK, if our program deals with a single currency, then we're totally fine. But quite often, this is not the case. And we need to model a currency. So let's use a type string for our currency. Well, clearly, this is not a good design. Because what about type safety? And what about validation? The currency or the string can be anything that's not a valid currency. So we improve it a bit and use an enum. So now we have a fixed set of currencies that we can use. So it's a little bit better, but still some issues. Like, for example, what about internationalization? And what about standardization, like the ISO 4217 standard that represents currencies as three character codes? So a more advanced approach is to use the Java Util Currency class, which is available in a JDK. Uh, it's actually quite simple. It supports ISO 4217 standard. So we use it in our product design, and we can instantiate it by using the get instance, static get instance method of the currency class and provide it with the three character currency code. But still, a few things are missing because we also need operations like addition, subtraction, etc. We can use utility classes for this but we have to take into account that the currencies might be different. So we have to do some validation, and we end up with a lot of utility classes, and also we should not forget to use them. So let's take a look at a better approach, uh, and that would be to introduce a money class, and a, which encapsulates the, both the value and the currency, as we see here, and also applies operations. So this is better, we apply it to our product design, and we can instantiate it by providing the big decimal value and the currency, and now we can apply the operations by using the money class. So this is better. So let's summarize the motivation for adding such a money class. Uh, well, monetary uh, amount values are a key feature of many applications, and there's no standard type at the moment. The ISO standard, ISO 4217, is uh, a standard which has some issues. For example, there's a central African franc which is used in two variants in different areas. So that might be a problem. Uh, furthermore, historical and virtual currencies are not supported in the JDK. 
cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, conversion and arithmetic is missing, and formatting is not provided. So we've seen quite a few issues in the current implementation in the JDK, and this led to the development of JSR 354, the Money and Currency API. It started in 2012, was finished in 2015. It's targeted for JDK 9, uh, but before that, in JDK 7 and 8, you can already use it by using the standalone API in combination with the Monita reference implementation. So let's have a look at the JSR itself. As we've seen, money is made of two parts, a value and a currency. In the JSR, the currency is represented by the currency unit interface. Implementations of this are required to be both thread safe and immutable. And here we see two easy ways to get your hands on a currency. Call the monetary singleton, pass in the currency uh, ISO code, or your locale. Uh, money also has to do with the amount. So there's a monetary amount interface defined. Again, implementations are required to be thread safe and immutable. Lots of more methods uh, here, but basically there are four categories. Bloody Boolean operators, like is greater than or is negative. The arithmetic uh, methods like add or divide. There's a method to get the currency for this amount. And there are uh, methods like with and query for dealing with uh, predicates and higher order functions. We'll get to that in a bit. So there are several ways uh, that we can create money. The easiest way is to get your hands on the default amount factory, pass in the currency, the value, and we're done. Now if we're using the reference Im implementation, it gets it even easier. Call one of the static off methods on the money class, and you're set to go. Uh, now, to get only the, the numeric value of the money, uh, you can call the getNumber method, uh, which returns a number value that extends the Java lang number class. So it's really easy to convert it to uh, other primitive types like long, double, etc. Okay, let's talk about operators and queries. The JSR provides two functional interfaces, monetary operator and monetary query. Monetary operator, it takes a monetary amount, applies an operation to it, and produces a new monetary amount. Monetary operator takes a monetary amount and retrieves some, op some information from it, like the currency code or the number of fraction digits. So let's take a look at an example. Uh, we have an amount of 10 euros, uh, which you want to multiply by two. We can use a lambda expression, as you can see. There are two ways to apply it. Either use the apply operation of the operator, or we can use the with method of the monetary amount. So an example of monetary query. Again, 10 euros, and now we want to retrieve the currency code. And we create a monetary query for this. And there are, again, two ways to apply it. Either use the query from, or use the query method on the monetary amount. Okay, well one of the goals of the JSR was to make formatting easy, flexible, and to avoid uh, pitfalls that we're used to in uh, JDK when it comes to dealing with text formatting, namely thread safety. But to deal with form uh, formatting, there's the monetary amount format interface. There are several uh, methods defined, but for now we'll take only a look at the format method. Well, if we have a, a monetary amount object, say of 12 US dollars, uh, we can get a, a a formatter uh, from the monetary formats class, passing in the, the locale in this instance, and we can format it. And this is a default uh, output. Uh, if you want to have more control over the, the output itself, there are several query builders that you can use. Or if you want to have total control, you can even define custom formats. Here we see an example using the monetary amount decimal format builder. OK, let's talk about the process of conversion. Conversion is changing the currency by applying an exchange rate, where the exchange rate is the ratio between two currencies. So as an example, let's create two monetary amounts with different currencies and try to add them. Well, this is not going to succeed, and a monetary exception is raised be because the currencies don't match. So we have to convert the currencies before being able to apply operations to them. A uh, conversion can be applied by using an exchange rate, and the exchange rate is provided by an exchange rate provider, as we can see in this example. 
Uh, this is from the Monita reference implementation. Um, the exchange rates are retrieved from the European Central Bank, the ECB, and used to convert the monetary amount from euros into dollars, as we can see here. It's also possible to retrieve exchange rates from the International Monetary Fund or to retrieve historic exchange rates. As we can see in the next example, uh, here we retrieve exchange rates from the IMF, historic exchange rate on the 10th of May 2016. And this is going to work because that date is on a Tuesday and an exchange rate is available. If it, were, if it were a Sunday or a Saturday, an exception would have been thrown because there's no exchange rate on that day. Okay, the JSR was developed on the Java 8, so it uses uh, Lambda functionality a lot. Um, the reference implementation also provides a lot of predefined functions using the monetary functions class. Uh, let's have a look at some examples. Uh, say we have an uh, array of uh, monetary amount objects and we want to sort them uh, based on the currency code. We could open a stream, call the sort method and pass in the predefined sort currency unit interface. Um, function, sorry. If we were to sort by, uh, uh, by the value, we could do the same thing, pass in the sort number function, uh, and we're done. But be aware, this last example, it only sorts on the value. So it would consider $10 equal to 10 euros. To avoid this problem, well, you probably guessed it, we have to use an exchange rate provider. Uh, to do that, there's a sort valuable uh, function that we can use. It's also possible to combine multiple sorters using the comparator then comparing method. And essentially, the second uh, sorter is called when two values are considered equal according to the first. Now, there are also a lot of uh, predefined high order functions uh, in the reference limit implementation it can use. Uh, and for now, we'll have a look at some. So, again, we have a stream. Uh, we call the reduce method on it and pass in the predefined uh, sum function. Now, if we have a uh, stream with different currencies, we will run into a bit of trouble. But you probably guessed it. That's why we have an exchange rate provider. Okay, let's talk about predicates. Uh, as you probably know, a predicate is a higher order function that operates on a value and returns a Boolean. And it can be used to filter collections, for example. Um, the Monita reference implementation provides several predicates uh, which act on monetary amounts either on the amount value or the currency. So we show an example of predicates on currency here. Um, we have an array of monetary amounts with different currencies. Uh, we use the is currency predicate to filter out only the dollar monetary amounts. Uh, and then two examples of matches in which we check whether there's at least one dollar amount in the collection or whether all amounts in the collection are US dollar amounts. Next. Uh, an example of a predicate on the monetary amount value. So we use the is greater than predicate to check whether uh, there are amounts greater than zero uh, and whether all amounts in the collection are greater than zero. So we've reached the end of the presentation. Uh, just to summarize, currently there's no proper mon monetary amount support in the JDK. This is fixed by JSR 354, the Money and Currency API. It's fixed in JDK 9. Standalone API is available in JDK 7 and 8, and it can be used in combination with the Monita reference implementation. Uh, it provides a couple of things. A monetary amount class, which encapsulates the value and the currency, and provides operations. Uh, operators and queries, formatting, exchange rate conversions, sorting reduction, predicates, all is provided. So, 15 minutes is a bit too short to cover the complete JSR, so you can read more uh, at these references. And we will make the presentation available on the SlideShare. Please visit the link on our website. Um, and that's all it. Thanks for attending the presentation. If you have any questions, please come over. Thanks.